Good evening Bahrain, I'm Bernadette from Gulf Brands International and you're watching Wine Online Wednesday, episode 21, a ride through the vineyard with Connoisseur Bicicletta. So what we've got here today is a selection of four varietals from Winery Connoisseur and from their range called Bicicletta, the bicycle. So we've got pretty straightforward favourites, I think, classic favourites, Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon. So, where is, where is Connoisseur? Connoisseur Winery is in Chile. So if you go around the centre of Chile, you come to the capital of Santiago. Go about 150 kilometres south of Chile and you come to the Colchagua Valley, which is known for a great climate for growing grapes and uh, it's known for its foggy mornings, which as we can see later is very friendly towards one of our little grapes here. Um, and the winery itself is in the town of Chimbarongo, so that's quite a mouthful. And that's where uh, all of the activity takes place for Connoisseur. The winery there was founded in 1993. And from the get-go, it focused on quality wine uh, from sustainable farming. So they're really into organic farming in a big way, biodynamic farming, and just generally reducing their impact on the environment all around. So you find this, uh, they encourage, they plant a lot of wildflowers among the vines, so that it encourages the good bugs who eat the bad bugs. Um, and it's uh, a very ethical way of farming. This extends through even their work practices. They've got a very strong corporate social responsibility charter that they follow. And it was the first winery to be awarded carbon neutral certification internationally because the savings they make on emissions offset any emissions which are generated in their export activity. So this is a world first for a winery. So enough about the techie stuff. I think we need to try some wine. So we're going to start with Sauvignon Blanc, a favourite we all know. And uh, just to recap, Sauvignon Blanc, the name itself, Sauvignon Blanc. Blanc is white, Sauvignon meaning wild. And uh, it always reminds me of uh, school days studying French and studying a short story by Maupassant, Guy de Maupassant, and it was called La Mer Sauvage. It was a terrifying short story about the wild mother. So, and I think whenever I see Sauvignon Blanc, this just reminds me of it. So the grape originated in the Loire and in Bordeaux. And in Bordeaux, it pairs up with its uh, partner, Semillon, to produce some absolutely fabulous white Bordeaux. But for today, we're concerned with it just as a straight up single varietal. Uh, the, why was it called the wild white? Well, the, the vine itself is, is uh, very verdant and it has, creates lots of foliage, a uh, very vibrant plant. So if it's not pruned, it does tend to go a bit wild. So possibly it was called uh, from that. So let's have a little nose here. Oh, very citrusy. Uh, lemons, grapefruity, not really oranges, more on, more on the, the uh, yellow and green citrus. But there's also a little um, flower note, a little fresh white flower. The color is lovely just a little hint of a, of a golden hue, very, very light pale gold. So this is, uh, actually the nose is mouth-watering. You feel like you really want to have a sip. Mmm. Passion fruit. Juicy. It's got high acidity. That description by itself sounds almost negative. We're not talking about vinegar here. We're talking about a refreshing zestiness. So that little in your mouth, it's mouth watering and it actually makes you want to have another sip. So what can we discover more? A 
It's like biting into a green apple. It's juicy. So if you think of Sauvignon Blanc from France, classic Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire, from the north of France, it will be very herbaceous, very clean, very minerally. Here, because we're in a warmer climate, we've got some more tropical notes coming through. So the, the passion fruit, but at the same time, there's a little hint of almost lemongrass and maybe some asparagus. And those are pyrazines. They're little compounds that get this little green note into Sauvignon Blanc, methoxypyrazines to give them their right. And they, they give you this acidity, which is very juicy and very rewarding in the mouth. Um, I think this is very food friendly for anything that needs a squeeze of lemon, a ceviche, um, sushi, uh, fish, I could even handle maybe some salmon, maybe that's getting a little bit too fatty, and um, uh, poultry, white poultry, uh, I mean a chicken, white poultry is a chicken. Yeah. So I think uh, that would be a great food match for that. So that's a great opener, very fresh, very singy. Let's move on to our second white, which is Chardonnay. Chardonnay, the number one white grape in the world. Um, it's very, very versatile. And the good thing about Chardonnay is that the grape itself is quite neutral. So whatever you do to it, uh, regarding the climate of where it's grown, the terroir, the land where it's grown, and whether you oak or un-oak it, you can completely change the nature of Chardonnay. So you could end up with a Chablis, which is a very lean, austere, dry, minerally um, expression which is from north of Burgundy in France. You could go to California and have a big, fat, round, buttery Chardonnay because it's a warmer climate and there's an oaking uh, practice going on there. Or we could go down to Chile and see what happens down there. So the grape itself originated in Burgundy, where it still reigns supreme. Um, and actually, there's a, a story about uh, the Emperor Charlemagne uh, his wife at the time uh, ordered the red wine, the black grapes producing red wine, to be uprooted in the Burgundy area and to be planted with Chardonnay instead because she was fed up of it staining his beard. And obviously drinking Chardonnay didn't stain his beard. There you are. Very interesting fact for you. So let's see how this goes. Colour. We are a little bit darker here. It's got a more deeper glow, still got a bit of yellowy gold, but definitely a deeper glow. Let's see where we are. Ooh. Mm, tropical fruits, pineapple, mango, uh, do, 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 a bit of kiwi. Oh, I think we really have to see how this tastes. Mmm. Gorgeous. Mouth-watering again, but not the same zingy attack of the Sauvignon Blanc. This one is a little bit more mellow, a little bit more rounded, a little bit longer lasting. It's probably got the same level of acidity, but the fruit flavours make it mean that it's not so sharp. Um, it's light and crisp and mellow. A lot more flavour than there would be in a North France uh, expression. And there isn't the butteriness of uh, a Californian expression or possibly even a Southern Australian expression. The reason why? There's a little hint on the label. Unoaked Chardonnay. Quite clear about it. So this is a Chardonnay which is just fruit forward, no oaking, so you can really taste all this lovely tropical fruit coming through. Mm. That's lovely. Again, that would go well with seafood, but probably cooked seafood where you've got maybe a creamy sauce. 
maybe some pasta dishes which are on the white and light side. Mm. Very nice. That's very good. So let's move on to the reds. And here, um, I think it's the first time we've had Merlot and Cab from uh, the same brand, one-on-one -on -one tasting. So this is going to be interesting. We have Merlot. Merlot is the second most widely planted grape in the world, followed and preceded by the most popular is Cabernet. But we're going to start with the Merlot as far as our tasting is concerned. So where did the Merlot actually come from? Uh, it's supposed to have originated in Bordeaux, uh, a little bit south of Bordeaux. It was first discovered in, there's an area called the Entre de Mer, which is the, uh, between the two seas, between the two rivers, which go into the Garonne estuary. And there's some uh, documentation that around 1784, this uh, grape was discovered, this orphan grape, because nobody can find its parents apparently, uh, on some islands in the middle of the estuary. And it was called Merlot in the dialect of the time, M-E-R-L-A-U. And there's two uh, stories where that came from. One is that the grapes themselves have got a blue-black kind of sheen, a bit like a blackbird. And in French, Merlot is a blackbird. And if you get up close to a blackbird, you'll see that they've got a very deep foliage, black and blue. And they say that the birds were used to be fond in of these grapes in particular, not so much of the other ones. So that's where Merlot supposedly came from. Uh, as a grape, it's very often in Bordeaux. These two blended together, give us all our classic Bordeaux with a little bit of Cabernet Franc, Petit, Mer Petit Verdot, and maybe a bit of Malbec here and there. But these two are the big soldiers in Bordeaux. If you like Merlot, uh, you be very pleased to know that the most famous Bordeaux, uh, with, which is heavily made with the uh, Merlot, is Petrus, one of the most expensive wines in the world. Also, if you're partial to a Saint-Emilion, maybe a Saint-Emilion Grand Cru, a lot of those do have a heavy Merlot presence in the blend. So let's see what makes Merlot. Ooh. Oh, what a fruity bouquet. We've got some uh, mellow fruits. Cherries, plums. Have a look at the color. Deep garnet with a little bit of a pinky tinge around the edges. This is still a very young wine, but the fruits that are coming through are just quite delicious. And there's some flowers, floral notes, um, violets, I think I would call them flowers of the night. You know when um, in a flower garden at night you, you perceive a different uh, aroma than when it's in broad daylight in the sunshine and you've got the more vibrant uh, flowers. This is lovely. It's almost like seductive flower note coming through here. Oh, we've got to taste this. Let's see how this is. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Plums. Plums coming through. Um, and a silky finish. Don't judge just on your first sip if you're having your first taste of Merlot after a long, hard day. Give it a two or three to let your palate and your mouth acclimatize. Otherwise, you might think up front, it's a little bit rough. No, let it acclimatize. Probably start with maybe a little glass of white beforehand. So this is lovely. This is so smooth. Plums, ripe, ripe black plums coming through. And there is a little bit of tannin, but it's very, very pleasing and it helps the fruit to stay fruity without being um, like a, a, a candy flavour fruit, like a, a bubblegum kind of fruit flavour. 
this is true, true fr fruit coming through here. This would be lovely with, um, we could handle like, um, yeah, it's probably a good red to open a meal if you're having a red wine meal. Some antipasto, uh, some tapas, little bites. It's a good wine for, an early, for a lunch or an early evening. Um, so maybe some pasta dishes, maybe veal would go well with this, I think. Yeah. So, oh, silky smooth, medium body, lovely. Very nice. And now we come to the Cabernet. Number one grape in the world, the most popular grape in the world, be it red or white. And I think everybody finds something that they do like in Cabernet. Um, showed up in about 17th century in Bordeaux and Cabernet, uh, the word Cabernet originally came they say from Carmine, the colour Carmine or it also could be related to an Arabic word for vine which means we've got, got quite a long history going back there. Um, the interesting thing, this grape, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon's daddy was Cabernet Franc and the mother was Sauvignon Blanc, La Mère Sauvage, the crazy mother. So interesting relation going on here. Um, let's see how it is. Ah, um, big red fruits, but there's something more going on here. There's more depth, there's more earthiness. It's not just fruit, fruit, fruit. It's, it's, uh, there's other flavors in here. There's, there's something like a bit of green pepper, um, a bell pepper, a crunchy, crunchy gr green pepper. And that is pyrazines. Again, methoxypyrazines, which come from La Mer Sauvage, the crazy mother, Sauvignon Blanc. So there's some elements of that coming in here. So if you get your fruit, you can get some of these uh, herby notes as well. Is there a hint of mint? Of eucalyptus? Something definitely green and herby going on there. Not aniseed, um, more like green, green pepper. But bigger flavour, wider flavour, with a long finish, and some soft spices, nothing too aggressive. And that's because this particular wine has had a gentle nine months in oak. And I would hazard to say that it is not new oak, it's used oak, so it imparts a much more mellow effect on the wine. So. Yeah, that's, this is this is really opening up now. Mm. Something interesting as well. If we look at the color, let's let's look back at the colors between these two. The Cabernet has got a much more pinkier color than I would expect, and also the big fruit has got a certain juiciness that I wasn't expecting. And again, I would uh, hazard to say, um, when these are single varietals, in Chile, they're allowed to have 85% of the varietal on the label, and then up to 15% of other grapes. In this particular case, in the co of the uh, Cabernet, I'd say there is definitely Pinot Noir playing around in here, because the color, we're getting Pinot Noir um, color is coming through and the juiciness of the Pinot Noir grape is also coming through and just breaking up some of the very soft tannins from this uh, uh, nine month oak aging. Wow, really interesting wine. I think all of these wines they're very um, varietal typical, fruit driven. Um, they're really, uh, you can be quite happy 
to serve them to your guests. Um, they're good quality, great value for their price, and they're very simple to enjoy. Um, something typical that connoisseurs do as well, colour coding. They follow the international colour coding. So you'll find that Sauvignon Blanc is usually green elements on the label, um, Chardonnay yellow, Merlot is usually purple, and Cabernet is usually red. Easy to understand. And the bicicletta on the label, not just on the label, you can see on the bottles, it's actually embossed on the, op on the bottles as well, uh, comes from when, when the winery was first uh, founded and established, the workers coming out of the town of Chimbaronga all used bicycles. It was the easiest way to get around the vineyards and go up and down and, and get to various plots and everything. And everywhere you would find around the vineyards where they would just drop their bicycles and go and do some work in a plot back on the bicycle again. again. So that inspired, inspired the Bicicletta range from Connoisseur. So there you have it. We just popped through four classic varietals, uh, given them a little bit of a Chilean interpretation, and all in the good hands of Connoisseur from Chile, to be sure. Thank you.